so one interesting thing about um, you know ever speaking in Asia is I think people understand better what the Asian flavor is than if you do globally. And I'll tell you why. Because if the world has seven and a half billion people in it, four and a half stay in Asia. Um, if we talk about the, you know, anything that's launched in the world, anything, and I bet the same is going to happen, you know, tomorrow as well, whether it's connected cars or anything. It's a, it's a real feature and innovation when any part of the world launches some concept like that. You bring it to countries like India and China, and suddenly it becomes a mass phenomenon. Because when you've got so many people, everything spreads like wildfire. And I think that's a little bit of the concept that I, I thought I'll talk about today. Uh, while the world is talking about getting itself wired for, for digital, I think we in uh, Asia, and in particularly India, since out of those four and a half, we contribute to over 1.2 billion people. If you just shut your eyes and think about 1.2 billion people, you realize how many people they are. Um, but the more interesting thing about India that absolutely fascinates me is it's, it's a country of contradictions. I don't think I have ever seen... Um, a country where everything is in so much contrast. 1% of the Indians contribute to 58% of the total wealth in the country. We have some of the best universities in the world. Um, and in fact, a couple of our uh, uh, colleges and unis are in the top 50 in the world as well. But despite that, we have over 200 million people who are illiterate. And keep each of these stats, keep getting it back into what digital would mean in a country like this. If 200 million people are uneducated, illiterate, how do you create a digital proposition for them? We only have 150 million desktops in the entire country of 1.2 billion people. But, oops but we have 350 million on our base have a smartphone. And if I look at uh, full India, we're talking about 970 million have a smartphone. Smartphones grew 23% in 2017, one of the highest growth rates in any country in the world. Japan growth rate was almost zero because penetration is, is to its fullest. U.S. was about 5%, um, and we grew at 23%. But despite that phenomenal growth, from a smartphone point of view, we're still only 35% of penetration out of the total 970 mobile phones that exist in the country. Only 35%. Now again, how do you create digital propositions in a country like that? We have the highest cost of spectrum in the world, the lowest availability of spectrum in the world, but we also have the lowest price of data. We had a low price of data, and then along came our friends in Reliance Geo, and now we have the lowest price of data. <laughs> so while we are a country that defines the highest of the highs and put literally big in everything, we are also the country that defines the floor in everything as well. So that's the chasm. Now, how do you create a digital strategy for a country like that? I think our challenge is, and this is a true, a true picture. This is exactly what our railway station looks like. And, and I was just telling Nick, um, these guys are planning to come over. Imagine if we lose Nick over there. <laughs> but I think the challenge that you know, the largest um, mobile operators and what we have is really about understanding how do you rewire yourself to cater to a country like that? 
create a proposition which is not something that appeals to just a, you know, a small percentage of society, but create a digital country which is for the next billion users. So I just thought I'll, I'll, I'll take a, a measure of saying if, we are, you know, if there are a billion phones out there, um, a billion feature phones, and a few smartphones, everything that we are doing, everything that Airtel is doing, or Geo is doing, or Voda, or Idea, or anything that the internet companies are doing, whether it's Amazon, or it's our, uh, the, you know, the largest e-commerce com uh, companies we have in India, or it's Uber, any of them, it actually only appeals to one-fifth of the population at max. And this is an exaggerated number. But that's what it caters to. And then what happens? For the last one year, e-commerce, which is one of the largest phenomena, including um, uh, any kind of purchase that happens on the internet, as well as the use, it goes to the 200 million and it stops. Over the last 18 months, we have not been able to cross that little chasm in the middle. So the mass of the country, and while we all, you know, and that's why I thought I'll be full of contradictions as well, since normally people stand here and say, look how great we've done. I thought I'll actually talk about this is what the opportunity is. This is what we've not covered. And everything that appeals to the first 200 million is people like you and me. That doesn't appeal to the next billion. And that's probably one of the biggest challenges that we are trying to overcome as we go along this journey as well. This is what we call are the early adopters, but it's not the proposition of the masses. And to take a proposition to the masses, it is not about a proposition. It's not about just creating, going and, uh, you know, creating the best app or the best website or anything like that. It is much about how do you take one billion people along that journey. And there are a few things that are actually helping through that, which is amazing that certain advancements in technology, which fascinates the world through a different reason, is actually the only way to reach the billion. If 200 million people have never gone to school, have not been educated. There is one thing that they do know. They know how to speak. And, um, you know, Indians are famous. We talk a lot. A lot. And a lot. You know, um, my big data team often, often teases me that we put the big in big data. Just on our consumer side, we, we consume, we generate about 35 to 40 billion data records in one day. And you know what will surprise you? What will surprise you is that this is exactly the same volume that WhatsApp creates in a day. And other than emails, WhatsApp is considered to be the second highest traffic generator on the internet. I mean, I mean from a transactions or a messaging point of view. But anyways, so changing the phenomenon of going from text to voice and allowing whatever we do, whether it's any digital proposition, if, imagine if we were to actually deliver it using the power of, you know, and it's not only a, a Siri or an Alexa, um, but bringing that power back into in such a way in a localized manner that every consumer could understand. That is what will change the digital adoption in the country. The same goes for language. Today, um, even though the internet and Google and some of these uh, companies have started doing in vernacular, the adoption is a lot more. I'll give you a, a small example I was sharing with somebody yesterday as well. A few years ago, um, we had launched uh, a very small platform, and it's called the One Touch Internet. And it was really targeted towards the 
that one billion, people who've never used um, data before and didn't know what they could use with data. And it's not that, you know, it's not that people don't want to use. First of all, they don't know what to use. Then they don't know what they'll do. And then they don't know how to use. And it's all those things. But it's a country that learns so fast. And what we've done is take the latest Bollywood songs, movie clippings, and put them out there for one rupee. And you could pay one rupee and just watch anything, which was a snippet of any kind of a video. And the amazing thing was we were getting, at that point, we were getting a few million people come and consume that, well, what I call snacking content, almost on a daily basis. And this was a few years ago. And from there, it is the power of video that has actually completely changed the data consumption in the country. And that's what YouTube banks on. That's what all of us bank on. But it's what's creating a very different habit in the people. So how do we build further on that? And similarly, we are so used to providing information. And you know, some of the simplest things that we did over the course of um, uh, the last few, few months is really learn how people actually consume. And you realized information for a person if they are not, because what happens is when we are designing, all of us sit together and design solutions, propositions. We design for people like ourselves. And we forget that there's a completely different mass out there. And one of the things that we've, you know, when we kicked off our digital program last year, and you know, um, I happen to head digital for Airtel as well, we created a digital lab Every proposition that we create, we tested with consumers. And believe me, for the first nine propositions that we created, we went back to the drawing board after doing the consumer forum. Because everything you think and how the consumer, and especially if you're dealing with the masses, how they perceive and what they want to know, you, there is no way that you, do, you can know it better than them. And now we've completely flipped that. Everything we want to create, we create a mock of that, do a consumer forum, then go build. Because if I'm going to have to rebuild anyway, might as well get it right first time. And this was one of the biggest learnings as well, that visual infographics work much better because that is the way the guy knows. If there is a bucket and he's seeing the bucket fill and he knows, OK, most of the bucket is filled means I've used most of my data. Because 2 GB or 5 GB doesn't mean anything to him. Um, I thought I'll take a banking example. In the same country where there are 150 banks, all the banks pulled together have 225,000 bank branches. The entire cities and towns of India are covered and laden with banks everywhere. But what if you live in a village? On an average, you have, to, you have to walk over four kilometers one way to go to the nearest bank branch. Now, for a person who is, works as a daily laborer, that is the entire day gone for him because he has to take a day off work and that day, he doesn't earn any wage because he's got to go to the bank to do whatever he needs to do. That's one of the prime reasons why financial inclusion in our country has suffered over these years. Now, if we were to think disruptively for that country, what would you do? Would you wait for 1 billion people to go to these 225,000 branches? Or would you convert every shop to be a bank? You don't need to be a bank branch to bank. And that's a, that's a phenomenal concept that has actually changed how banking is happening in India. Um, in fact, um, just earlier this year, we launched uh, a payments bank. And this is a new license that the government had given out. And about 11 licenses were given out. But I think by the end of it, we'll probably have only three, max four players 
um, playing in this space. But what is the difference? So Airtel has about 2 million retail points where you can go and recharge. 225,000 branches, 2 million retail points. At each one of those retail points, you could go and put in cash and take out cash and pay for your goods. And in just a very short period of you know, 10, 11 months since we launched, when the day we launched, we had more than 200,000 branches because you just converted a lot of these retail points into banking points. It is, and you digitized currency at that source. He takes cash, digitizes it. Another person comes, wants to take out cash. Now he's got cash handy, gives cash to him. Money is in circulation, but for us, it's all digitized. There is absolutely no paper, nothing ever used. But that is a disruptive concept. And it is that level of disruption that will allow us to cross that chasm. Because we'll, you'll have to do something very differently. Otherwise, you will always remain in that niche market of less than 200 million. Um, I already talked about video, but increasingly, over the last seven months, it said far more video was watched on the mobile phone than was watched in all the TVs put together in the country. That's what revolutionizes the concept as well. And it's bringing the same thinking. You know, for so many years, in thinking of ourselves just as a, as a telecommunications provider, we've been creating so many products. Our entire marketing engine has been focused on this quarter, we're going to create this product. And then my entire engineering shop goes in ultra high gear saying, we've got to get this product out there in the next 60 days. And we've completely stopped that over the last year. It is all about creating and building platforms. That's it. We build a platform, and then on top of it, you put a product, put a product, put a product. There's a video platform. There is um, a, a comms platform. There's an online store. And the online store is not like a conventional online store where you go buy something, and off you go. You come on the online store. You buy something. With a, if you buy a, an iPhone, it comes at one-tenth of the price because the rest is spread as an EMI. You get an instant loan. And in the, within that second, when the person just presses one small, tiny little button, which is called Buy Now, you're, since you know, we have millions and millions of subscribers, we know how good they are in, in making their payments and what actually their depth of wallet could be. You use that power to assess whether to give them a loan or not. So in, instantly, you either give a credit or not give a credit. You take the down payment. You go and book the loan. with, And there are many banks and NBFCs behind. And it makes no difference. You choose whoever gives the best proposition to the consumer. And a device is delivered to your house. And all you have to do is pay a monthly payment which includes your plan, your EMI, everything. Now, all these things, you know, my, my team teases that it's actually not a device platform. It's an API management platform. Because you click on that one little button, and off goes these multitude of APIs that go and do different things and come back, and suddenly the device is at your doorstep in 24 hours. But the concept... Um, is that the consumer doesn't pay a penny more than he would have paid if he'd bought the entire phone up front. So the cost of the loan is also free for the consumer. And the biggest thing that has happened when we launched that is 85% of the customers who bought the high-end phones either never had a smartphone before or never had a high-end phone before. Because it takes the affordability to a different level. But again, these... These are the levels of concept that will help us cross that, that big chasm in the middle. Um, and you know, similarly, the, the last little handshake icon you see, that's actually um, that's the way I learned how to cross that chasm. 
So a lot of our, re I talked about two million retailers that we have. A lot of uh, these retailers, they're in rural areas as well, and they're of course in urban, but they actually form a big part of that illiterate, uneducated bucket. And over the course of the last three years, um, and actually it's something we did in 2014-15, was we went and digitized them completely. So it's a end-to-end, -end, our entire sales and distribution for over three years um, has never had any paper, including the sales incentives for the sales team and everything. But it was going to the retail points and digitizing that guy. And you know, the amazing thing is, even if he has never been to school and never learned anything through formal education, but when he knows that his prime source of income, which comes from Airtel, is only going to come to him if he adopts this technology that comes on his phone, it is amazing how quickly people learn. 100% of my retailers who actually have smartphones are on the platform. And now I can use that platform to sell anything, to do anything, deliver any messages that I want him to deliver to the consumer. That is what has helped us starting to cross that chasm. Because now he's the conduit, because in the village, he's the one guy that everybody would go to, whether to do their recharge or get a SIM or so on and so forth. And that's just, just my summary of you know, a few of the things. And we actually think this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more to do, and there's a, lot, a long way to go. And in our own way, we are, we're trying to adapt you know, everything that we do to be able to go and appeal to those one billion people. So for, for those of you that also come from large population countries, I would ask you the same, whether you are rewired for digital. Thank you very much. Thanks.